Today we are going to talk about 3D printing with skirts, why I love them, and why I think you should too. For those of you that don't know what a 3D printing skirt is or what a skirt is in reference to 3D printing, it's essentially just a perimeter of filament that gets laid down before the printer goes and prints out your main part. So if you sliced up a file with a skirt, it would go ahead and heat up the hot end and the bed like a printer would normally do, but then instead of just going ahead and starting to lay down the uh, model that you're trying to print out, it'll lay down a certain set number of perimeters around that model, and then once that set of perimeters is done, it'll go ahead and start printing out the model that you actually want to print. I'm not exactly sure when I started using skirts, but I've definitely been using them for at least the last couple of years on just about every single part that I print out, regardless of material, regardless of printer. My day-to-day -day slicer is Cura, and in just about every main slicer that I've used, whether it's Cura or Repetier or uh, Simplify or Prusa Slicer or Matter Control or Idea Maker or whatever other slicer you use, most of them have an option for a skirt and it's typically found somewhere around the adhesion section. There's really two main reasons as to why I use a skirt when 3D printing. The first being to make sure that I prime the nozzle and that filament is flowing when I'm going to start a print. Since with 3D printing, at least in traditional FDM or FFF 3D printing, the first layer is the most important layer and that layer really determines whether the rest of your uh, print is going to turn out successful or not, you definitely want to make sure that you've got a nice consistent bead of filament laying down for that whole entire first layer. Normally when you're starting a 3D printed part, there's a little bit of kind of lag, if you will, between the print starting and the filament actually beginning to flow. Sometimes it's hardly noticeable, other times it could be 50 millimeters or even up from there. And since that first layer is so crucial to the success of your printed part, even having just that little bit of uh, filament that's not extruding correctly at the beginning of your print could be the difference between a successful print and a failed print. And so by running that skirt around the print and doing the certain set number of laps, you're guaranteeing that the filament is flowing and that when it jumps from the skirt to starting to print your main part, that that filament is not gonna have any issues just flowing right away in a perfect bead. One other added benefit of that is if you are transitioning from printing in a dark filament, like a black to a light filament, like a white or a light gray or whatever other color, sometimes there's a little bit of bleed. So obviously when you're switching colors of filament, you try to push the filament through until you see the correct color purging. But every once in a while, there's still a little bit of that other color that gets stuck in the hot end. So um, in my experience, by printing that skirt around the perimeter, if there is any more of the old color in the hot end, it'll actually print into the skirt instead of into your actual model, which is really nice because uh, again, if you're printing with like a white filament and you have printing with black previously, it doesn't look good having a, you know, even just a little black blob on the, in the side of it. It just looks off, at least to me. So um, having that couple of perimeters around the outside really ensures that if there is any of the past color that's in there, it will again lay down and extrude itself into the skirt and not into the model that you're actually trying to print. So the second reason why I use skirts when 3D printing is for proper bed adhesion, and it has been a huge lifesaver to ensure that, again, it's all stemming back down to that first layer, but that my first layer is the correct distance, the nozzle is the correct distance from the bed surface to ensure that I don't have filament that's printing like into the bed, but I also have filament that's sticking and laying down um, as it should be. Most of my printers are manual bed leveling with the exception of a few. I actually, for the most part, significantly prefer manual bed leveling on most printers. Um, it's just really easy for me to on the fly calibrate the bed and make any quick changes versus uh, in some situations from my experience has been trying to fight with the firmware or fight with the uh, leveling probe or sensor to get it to actually do what it's supposed to do. When I am running a large print, the skirt does wonders for me. So by laying down that skirt and typically I do something like three-ish perimeters, three sounds about right for the most part, um, it lays down that perimeter around the, where the part's gonna be printing. And so I'll actually follow it with my hand or my finger and just kind of rub on the perimeter to make sure that it's got proper bed adhesion. So if I see that on the first time going around doing the perimeter, the back left corner, the filament's not sticking down, then I could really quick stick my hand over there and just adjust the knob a turn or so. And then as the perimeter goes back around for the lap two, I can check to make sure that I've got it now set up correctly. And so for me, that's awesome because you're able to make sure that your 
part, when the, when the printer starts actually printing your main part, that you've already got the leveling where it needs to be if anything was off, versus if the, if the printer is not perfectly leveled and you just jump straight into printing your part, well, you can't just continue it. Like, most of the time, if you have a layer or two in your main part that's just completely loose or too far away from the bed, you're gonna have to kill the print, remove the little bit of plastic and restart the print. Well, with this situation, you don't have to do that because it's just the perimeter. If the perimeter is loose, it's no big deal. You can just tear it off, but it gives you again that time, that, that initial you know minute or whatever it ends up being to make sure that your bed is level on all, all four sides. And again, it's more for manual bed leveling, but the majority of 3D printers are still manual bed leveling. So um, this to me again is huge. And for smaller parts, it's not, as big of a deal because the center of my bed where I print most of my parts I know is level. But it's once you start getting to those outer corners, especially lately I was printing out some of the PPE face shields to donate to um, some people that I know that were in need of them and it took up a huge portion of the bed, larger than most of the prints that I've been doing on um, the printer as of lately. And so I was able to quickly see, okay, the front right was a little bit loose. Let's turn this counterclockwise so that the bed raises up. And that ensured that again, I wasn't wasting material or losing prints because in this situation that we're in right now, the um, face shields and the material are pretty valuable. So I definitely wanted to make sure I wasn't losing material or these parts that need to get out so urgently. So again, in this situation, it was awesome, but in general, it is just amazing. It is such a lifesaver. And especially for when you start printing out some larger prints, the first layer becomes even more important that you've got the correct adhesion that you're looking for. I seriously cannot even begin to recommend or speak highly enough of 3D printing with skirts. Um, there's really not a lot of settings when it comes to calibrating or um, setting up the perimeters for your skirts in the slicing software in Cura. There's basically just enable skirts, um, how far do you want the skirt to be from your printed part, and then how many laps do you want it to do, which again, I do uh, about three three laps is my standard of what I do. So that's enough time to, again, make sure it's primed, make sure things are laying down correctly, and then get off to the main print. And I will actually go ahead and show you guys just in Cura where that's at in case you were curious. All right, so in Cura, this is Cura 4.5, which as of making this video is the latest version of Cura. We're just gonna go ahead and add a printer profile. I'm gonna do a Creality. We'll just do a Creality uh, Ender 3. We'll add that profile so it builds all of the default stuff. Then if you go over to the printer settings and you scroll down to where it has build plate adhesion, you should see a setting called skirt. And by default, it'll have some preset options, but if you wanna be able to customize these a little bit more, if you hit the gear icon here, it'll pop up another window and under skirt, you can choose things like skirt line count, skirt distance, and skirt brim uh, maximum length. And so the only ones I usually really play around with is the skirt line count. The skirt distance, even the default setting, which is in this case 10 millimeters, that seems to be pretty fine. And I never touch the skirt uh, brim minimum. So Cura has a default setting set to three. If you think that's too much and you want to go down to two or one, you can do that as well. But let me just show you guys the difference between having no skirt and having a skirt so you can see what I'm referencing. So for example here, I went ahead and dragged in just one of the face shields that I've been printing out. And if I hit slice with the basic settings, it'll go ahead and slice that file. And if I go to preview, you can see that the printed or the STL file is all sliced up, which you would expect. So right now, if I were to load this G code to my printer and hit print, it's gonna warm up the hot end, it's gonna warm up the bed, and it's just gonna go ahead and start printing out uh, this part, which doesn't allow for any priming of the nozzle. It also doesn't allow for um, checking to see, again, you can check before with just a piece of paper whether your bed's level, but it doesn't give you a chance to check with the skirt like I was referencing. So then if you go back and you just choose under plate adhesion and you go to skirt and again I'll leave all the settings default which is essentially what I use and I hit slice again so now as you can see there is a skirt that's laid around the print and so it is going to be three lines and now when the printer heats up the hot end and it heats up the hot bed it's going to go ahead and print these three rounds of skirt or perimeters around the outside of your part. And again, what that'll do is that'll ensure that 
the nozzle primes itself so that way when it's done doing the three laps and jumps over it's got a steady flow and it'll also allow you to check to see as it's going around whether you've got proper bed adhesion on all you know four corners of your bed so it's really really easy to do uh, it'll be slightly different in other slicers but still the settings and the wording should be nearly identical and again i cannot speak highly enough of doing this it is it has been such a game changer for having successful 3D prints that adhere properly to the bed for me. The little bit of filament that is wasted on doing perimeters to me is so minimal compared to the uh, increase in successful prints that I've had since switching over to using skirts. Out of curiosity, I'd love to know how many of you guys are already using skirts, and if you're not using skirts, do you plan on checking them out after seeing this video? Uh, I do know that on some printers, even on mine, I've got starting G-code script where it lays down one bead of filament, which does help and it is definitely better than nothing for priming the nozzle, but I still think that having the skirt for being able to check to make sure that your bed is leveled is huge. So I'd be curious to know, again, if you guys are already using it, what you think about them, and if you're not, and you do decide to check them out, please let me know what you think about uh, using skirts when 3D printing. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for uh, more awesome videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is a ton of fresh content coming your guys' ways. And if you do want to support the channel anymore, links will be in the description to where you can find my Patreon. Uh, I super appreciate anyone that does support the channel. It really helps me to get more gear and spend more time working on producing content for you guys, which I really do enjoy doing. On that note, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. This has been Daniel from ModBot, and I am out. Peace, guys.